Now that's a good question since we were talking about that. Are you concerned about the world collapsing? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just curious because yeah, yeah. everybody has their own perspective. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I, oh, hi. We were just talking about the world <laughs> collapsing. Um, hey, welcome back to the channel. Welcome, Kevin. This is the oh, third visit you. you've made in one day. Wow, that's right. I can't believe it. Reminds me of uh, uh, a week in Cincinnati we spent once night. <laughs> No offense to anybody in Cincinnati, especially <laughs> Richard Polt. But anyways, so what we have here are two Smith Corona made typewriters. Yep. And they're both the so-called six series, right? Yes. Made in the nineteen sixties. I don't know if they was named after the decades. Like the five series is the fifties. Oh, I hadn't thought about anyways. that before. I suppose that could be that way. So this is branded as an as the Singer Electric. So Smith Corona Singer Electric. There is a power cord, and it has the electric logo with a little power cord symbol on it. And we've decided that the color of this bezel is not like banana yellow. We think it's whiskey gold. Whiskey gold. Whiskey gold. And so this is a electric power cord AC powered typewriter. And on the other hand, we have something a little different here, which you've maybe already seen. Yeah. So this is the atomic power writer. <laughs> yes. And it is powered also by a power cord optionally, but it's battery powered. And if you notice, there is no power there cord. There is no power cord on it. That's right. It's magic, right? It's magic. So they're both manual carriage operated six series typewriters. Uh, but let's kind of talk about the differences and similarities, shall we? Let's see. Starting on my carriage here, mine has the uh, end of page little indicator. This does here, but it's made out of metal instead of and a plastic Mine is a piece. plastic thing. That's kind of different. And I think the carriages are, are they the same size? I think so. I yeah. think we're looking at... 10-inch uh, carriage. 10-inch carriage. Yeah. yeah. And this is a Pica typeface, and the scale goes up to 83 and this is Pika, goes to 82. 82? Nope, maybe? no, wait a minute. Uh, 83. 83, okay, so same size carriages. And of course, it has the infamous articulating hood that we discovered you could use for secret typing. For secret typing. You could you could cover your hands so nobody can tell what you're writing. Of course, they would read the paper, obviously, but that, <laughs> that's beside the point. That's beside the point, yeah. Yeah, we'll just we'll, well ignore that Well, that's what that we're detail. supposed to do in stencil mode, so it's an invisible ink. Oh, that's right, of course, right? Okay, but so there are some feature differences, though, down on the keyboard here, right? So first of all, of course, you have a power, AC power indicator, a little neon lamp. That's correct. Yeah, and, when it's plugged in and you have... It, right. It's not turned on. It's just when it's plugged right. in, that lamp And so on. that's useful when you're charging the battery. Right. The battery pack, right? So even though the machine may not be turned on, that it tells you power's on, it's charging. It's charging the battery. And, that's, and you need to know that because since this is an ICAD battery, you can't leave it like a modern lithium battery setup with a power regulation. You can't leave it plugged in all the time. You have to unplug it so that you don't overcharge the battery. And you can tell if you're overcharging the battery because underneath here where the power pack is, it will get hot. Okay. I mean, we get warm, and right. so that's it's time to unplug the, the power supply. Okay, so you have a bichrome setting on the upper right, the same position, same lever. Yep. You have the tab set clear and the tab button on top like the 6 Series all have. Yes. You have the rib rev, which I think is great. The yeah. Rib rev. Rib rev. Rib rev. Right. The rib in reverse. And then... Um, where you have that AC indicator, I have a copy set button. Right. Now, this one, since it's a DC motor rather than an AC motor on the inside, they only have it one belt oh, instead yes. of two belts. Right. And so that gives you basically only one type impression okay. force. And what the copy set does on the AC powered ones is there's an intermediate pulley. Right. And you're actually controlling the tension of how hard you're pulling on the first belt. The, the belt between the, the, the motor itself and the first pulley, if you pull harder on it, it makes more of an impression, a harder impression. Harder impression. So it implies that there's some kind of slipping going on when you're in a softer impression mode, right. I guess. Right. Underneath here was the touch control, the touch setting. And I don't know that I have to That look. one has it. That does have it. Yes, it does have the touch control. But right you also have uh, two other things that mine doesn't have. You have a 110 or 220 
position right. for the AC and th- for the AC. And you have a switch. It actually is related to the 110 Oh, the 110 or 2. Okay. So the switch that you have to press oh, this down. Oh, you have to press the button and then flip the switch, over, flip the switch for, over for a different current. For a different current. Right, right. Right. So, okay. And then, of course, at the very bottom, we have where the, the, power, pack, the power pack. Where mine doesn't have the atomic power pack. And then you can tell because of that, too, oh, yes. the, it has basically an extra... Right. You have two long rubber rails for feet, right. whereas mine only has the four little rectangular ones in the corner. Right. And then oh. in between, that's where, the because it took up more room to do the power pack, uh, battery setup, and also the power transformer to go from AC to uh, DC to charge everything. So they, it required more space. I there. see. Okay, so right. So they, they added that onto the bottom. So is it a little bit taller? So it would be a little bit taller. Okay. And I wonder if it's the same size case. Uh, that's a good question. They're the same design of case. Yeah. And so the, the thickness is what I would be interested in. And it looks like they're the same. I would say they're the same case. I mean, I'm thinking they are. Which only makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I'm looking at Maybe. that without a tape measure. Yeah, it looks like yeah. the same case. They're the same case. Okay. Because I know that the 5 Series electric has what looks like a holiday case, right? but it's thicker than the manual 5 series holiday case. Oh, really? Yes, it's a oh, thicker case. So, about that? But everything else, as far as the keyboard, you have the same size space Well, I do bar. notice one difference oh. is that, now, this has, both of these machines have a change of type. Oh, right. Mine has the number one, and his has the number one, too, and you can change that, but oh, yours that's is right. permanent. The Singer particular model branded only has a single change of type on the one key, Whereas a lot of the others had two. Like, I think my Galaxy 12 has two. Has two, right. It just happens to be the Singer branding only had one change of time. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, and the shifting, shift buttons are the same. Power switch is in the same location, it looks like. And so, very similar. The MR, margin release, right? So. Yeah, and is yours a uh, manual backspace? Uh, mine is a manual backspace. Okay, so that's exactly. the same thing. Same thing. I noticed that the uh, Power Rider has... Oh, kind of a it, has a it has a cushioned, well, that's because it's atomic. It's atomic, right, and you have to have that insulation material. Yeah, there whereas exactly, this is yeah. just, you know, manual, and there's no radiation. And there's yeah, no, yeah, you don't have that radiation You don't have the problem, problem with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very similar in a lot of ways. It has the classic rabbit ear, uh, you know, paper rest, paper yep. fingers, right, and the your push and slide margin buttons. They're the same, same color. Uh, now, but, mine has a... Uh, um, Oh yeah, mine has the removable, but it doesn't removable say MR. Pattern. Yours says MR, which or uh, actually, actually RP, RP, which is removable platen or something. Well, I actually think it's radioactive uh, power writer. Or okay, recycled plutonium. Recycled plutonium. There we go. Exactly. It could yeah. be. And this is the button here for the removing the platen, or is that what is that? Uh, actually, yeah, it's a little different here. Uh, Actually, you that know, is your centering. Key. Oh, that's the centering, right? Okay, I'm sorry. The, the, the that's the centering. Don't yes. have the uh, uh, lock. It just centers it. Centers it. it. But I noticed that my power rider does not have a centering. You don't key. have the centering key on yours. Yeah, and I don't know why they did that. Yeah, that's interesting because it doesn't. It doesn't so we're talking that. about this one here. It's, yeah. It just centers it to put it back in the case. And here you, you have a nice little windstorm coming up here. Yes. You probably got like you know noise in the microphone, but oh well. Hey, springtime in Albuquerque, it's gonna be windy. That's right, welcome to New Mexico. So, it looks like most every other feature though on these two typewriters are, are about the same. I think the plastic uh, card guys are the same. Everything else looks the same, so. And then does that have a, uh, oh, now here's something that's really fancy, because this is such a fancy machine. Yes. We'd almost have to see it on the inside, it has Jeweled escape. Oh, this is not a. Oh, this is not jeweled. This is mere bushings or something. Yeah, right? but yeah, mere bushings. Yeah. Yes. So yours probably is going to run a lot smoother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something yeah. that's going to oh, run yeah. a lot smoother. Oh yeah. But I don't have the radioactive ribbon spools. Well, that's because it's not atomic. It's not atomic. Yeah, so not atomic. you know there is that. But anyways, <laughs> it is nice to see some of the variations in the 6 Series design and what they had to, between, you know, a Smith Corona branded versus Singer branded. They took away one of the, you know, auto uh, change it keys and all that. So it is interesting, right? Yeah. But in reality, yeah. they both type well. They both type very well. And 
with that being said, we should probably put some paper on ah, the machines. Yes, we should do that. Well, so I have a little piece of newsprint paper on mine, and it's... I'm using one of these bulldog clips, right, to keep it weighted down because of the wind, but it actually, this particular clip is worn out, so, <laughs> oh well. We'll just ignore that for now. But this is a piece of newsprint paper that got wet at some time, and oh, so yeah. it's kind of wrinkled, it has that funky look to it, right, and so it should set my margin. And what I put in here is a piece of, uh, half of a piece of, uh, kind of a vellum type paper. Yeah, I really like that paper. It's translucent, and uh, it takes the ink really well, but uh, it... Does it smear any? Maybe? Does it smear? No, no it's just uh, that even though this is a really good ribbon, the it's a little less black. Oh, okay, right. right. Um, it doesn't absorb as much. It doesn't absorb yeah. as much. So, but it's a uh, it's kind of neat with this translucent and all that, and it makes it really an only a one sided piece of paper. You wouldn't type on no, both sides. No, Well, so you know, I have a power cord, and it's fairly quiet. You can barely hear any noise, right? Well, see, I can do it with mine, though. See, I can put it on my lap. Oh, see, yeah. I have no power cord. So to I can interfere type with here. anything. Yeah, so yeah. it's not in the way or anything like that. Although now it's like uh, holding a heavy dog on it your It would lap. be like a, like a Great Dane. <laughs> a Great Dane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings to mind one of the things that we really like about these electric machines is the apostrophe. Oh, is absolutely. It's down here, unshifted. And it's where you would find it on a computer keyboard. Right. right? And we've talked about this before, but... I first re remember seeing this on the 5 Series Smith Corona Electric. Yes. And I don't know if it, it showed up any earlier than that. Maybe some of those big early office electrics. I've done a little research trying to determine when that showed up. And it. I think when you get into the standard machines, like the IBM Selectrics, the uh, model C's and D's and possibly B's before that, May have shifted it to that okay, point, okay. but um, it was still mid 1950s, yeah. and only a few machines did that. Yeah, I thought it funny in the five series they sold the you know silent super and all the other manuals with a traditional manual keyboard. At the same time, they were selling the the, the five series electric with that different configuration, you know. And that with the uh, standard configuration, as we where the uh, apostrophe is above the eight and the uh, quotation mark is above the two, that persisted all the way to the end of typewriter production. Oh, yeah. All the manual small portables they kept making, like Brother and everybody else, back into the 70s and upwards to the 80s. Well, even with my Godrig Prima from India, which would be, you know, the last manual typewriter, full-size manual typewriter made, that keyboard layout was still the same uh, in the 1990s when, <laughs> yeah. when they were doing that. It must have been tradition <laughs> is all I can think of, right? Tradition and has to do with the uh, type manufacturer, the type Maybe so, face yeah. manufacturer, because oh, okay. those were usually a separate company of the typewriters. Okay, right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Of course, we had a little dust storm blow through here earlier. Yes. So we got a little pollen. It's good for your allergies. Absolutely. To drink pollen in your scotch. Well, it's that type of thing, you know, you have a little bit of pollen so that you be, uh, build up an immunity. Oh, that's right. That's like the whole thing about e eating uh, honey bee honey from the local area. Right. You know. That's supposed to be good for you. This is almost as good. It's almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I can't think of anything that would make these machines any better other than if they had a one and a half line spacing selector. I would like that, but that's me. No, I kind of would like that too. And then, I mean, you can get by with not having a... Um, half space because you can uh, you can you, know, you type the word and then if you need to make a correction and add a letter you can redo it and just oh you do a partial backspace do a partial backspace which moves it part way right yeah. right and so you can make that work it's just it's just that, a little finicky yeah. it's a little finicky yeah. and uh, even the Hermes 3000s were the same way you have right. to do that partial backspace right right and and depending on the machine you can kind of since this is manual not electric as far as the backspace, you can kind of get a feel, yeah. and then you can also you can line it up with your type gauge. Your type gauge, so you yeah. can line up. So, okay, that's right, dead center. Right. Uh, I know that on the uh, Hermes three thousand, you could actually feel the linkage. Oh yeah. And if you went too far, you got more resistance. Oh, okay. Kind of go in between as far as the feel. Well, what do you think about the difference in the knob style? Like yours has the flared out black part with a big, you know, 
whereas mine more like tapers in, but they're doing kind of the two-tone effect, the black and the cream color on both knobs, and yours is sort of black and silver and white. It's kind of, you know, two or three tone. It's, yeah, it's interesting. The, the coloring, I think, is fine. They both have the same thing. You pull this out, right? Or, or push it in. Oh, see, that's the difference there. Oh. This is the, uh, like, the Series 5. Oh, that, with, the, with a little metal. With a little metal. Oh, I see. This is a push in. And this looks like, I mean, when you look at this metal thing that's sticking out, I mean, that yeah. is right out of oh, the Jetsons. It is. It, it is a fluted. And, fluted yeah, cone. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty you know, mid-century modern. That's but, Yeah, so that's, and that's different than the Series 5, which was yeah. basically a real smooth. Move. It was just a little shaft with a button. Yeah, on the so end. that's you know that almost looks like that, that's atomic, that, atomic that radar coming it out does, and all that yeah. stuff. So yeah, so here you pull it out to release it, whereas on yours you push it in. Right, right. Um, and I have to admit, just looking at it, although I haven't used this uh, yours that much, yeah. is that this seems to be a little more grippy because yeah. you grip in and then you have resistance yes. coming that yes. way. Yes. Yeah. Where here. It feels like you could it possibly slip, slip a little right. bit. Right. It looks more streamlined, but it may be a little bit. You know, if you're in the throes of late night writing, right? You know, and your hands are just dripping with sweat, you might slip on that knob. You know, and what reminds me is when they make this Disney Singer, or whether they made this in a Sears model, or even a Montgomery Ward, and now they made it in a Smith Corona model. It seems like they have all these engineers that have all these different design cues that they design, oh, yeah. and they Smith Corona yeah. decide, okay, for this one we're going to use this design cue, and the engineer in the background is going, well, wait a minute, what about mine? <laughs> and so they put it on the other model. You can do the Singer, but you're not going to do the SCM branded one. You can do the Singer, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or the Sears. Or the well, Sears. Sears has their own playbook. They have yeah. their own design playbook, so we have to go by whatever they want, right? <laughs> but well, both of these machines put out a really good imprint. Oh, absolutely! You know, and uh, it's like, you know, I've said this before, but it, it it takes just a bare amount of force to operate one of these keys. The key travels maybe five millimeters or so, half a centimeter, but it throws the tie bar into the page with a pretty good force. Oh, absolutely! You yeah, know? It, it, and. It's uh, good. And so you get that maximum dark typing effect on the paper with very minimal finger effort. And that's what's great about them. Right. And then you do, like you said, on the front, you make that adjustment oh, yes. for your impression, that, the way it feels to right, you right, right, here. Right. And so what's really nice about that is for like somebody like me, who's a very heavy-handed typewriter, I put it on more of a heavy set just because... That way, it feels better to you. It feels better, and then also I have fewer accidental strikes. Oh yes, I have to blow some pollen out of my yeah, and so but then you get machine. the same impression no matter whether you're hitting it lightly or not. Right, and uh, and that's probably the only thing I can think of a, uh, as far as a disadvantage on the keyboard for electrics is that if it is too light of a feel, you get those accidental strikes because your hand doesn't just all the way across and you brush across yes. the key. Yes, right. Um, I have that problem particularly with the later keyboards. When they started doing the, uh, I don't know if they, the nickname Chicklets or whatever, where, oh, they, yes. where the yes. each key is right next to the other one, yes, yes. as far as the shape, like on a, like on a Selectric, right. and you you can easily brush across there and it get, get stray characters. Well, we haven't uh, talked about this very much. Of course, I'm joking, but you know my little left hand pinky finger. Uh, I tend to roll into the keys. Right. We, so yeah. with, with manual typewriters. Because you're, the stroke, the depth of the keystroke is, is deeper. Right. I tend to hit the shift lock. But on these electrics, I don't have that problem because the, the keystroke is so shallow. Yeah, it is, yeah you don't and, have to go down So the, the shift far. lock is pretty close to the A key, but it doesn't bother me because it's... You know, yeah, and you almost don't even notice it that it's that close. No, you don't. Because and, you, and you don't have that. You're right. You don't have that error of, of when you're, you're typing and you just hit it. And you're 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 not rolling into right, it, right, right, right. Yeah. And, and that is one of the things I think is kind of a, a nice advantage of uh, Olivetti did this, yeah. and some of the other ones where they had this plate that separated all of the keys. Oh yes. And so the keys were very much separated rather than right next to each other. Yes. So you, you, you it kind of prevents you from doing that accidentally. It does. It has strike. like a, a bezel, and the key caps come up through these holes in it. Right. Yeah. And when you first look at that, you go, well, that's definitely different looking than the uh, manual. Yeah. But then when you look at that compared to the Series 5, now Series 5 doesn't have that bezel. Right. And it has a keyboard that is just like the manuals. Yeah. But I have noticed on it, I type slower on it because I have to be more careful because it is easier to do straight character hitting uh, on that particular so keyboard. So there's something, is it is it the 
the holes in the bezel stabilize the keycaps? As like, is there, is there? And that could be. Is there like key movement a little bit sideways on that, on the five series maybe? Uh, that could be on the yeah. five series where you yeah. get that little bit of a key movement, and then yeah. then because the typewriter is a little bit sensitive, all of a yeah. sudden it hits that. Right. Whereas on a manual, you have a problem unless you do the full stroke. Yeah. You get that little less of key error. Right. Uh, unless you you know you you actually hit in between the keys, which happens sometimes. right. And now, now there is one other thing I've noticed between typing on a manual versus electric is, with a manual sometimes you can pull your hand back halfway through a keystroke yes. when you know you're hitting the wrong key. Yes. But with one of these, there's no way because no. it's only like a five millimeter travel. Right. And you're going to hit that letter. <laughs> yes. And that's why you get very familiar with your X key. <laughs> the X key. Yes. And, it's and that's why the X key is rapid. That's right. And you want to put it on red. <laughs> and then if you even have to, you can underline it in red with the underline key. There you go. Yes. Anyways. <laughs> but these are nice machines. I think for serious writing, where you want to do hours of writing, you don't want to have hand fatigue, uh, and they do the job very nicely. Um, they're they're not as full featured like an IBM Selectric will give you interchangeable type elements, but these are smaller, lighter, cheaper, s probably will require less service or more reliable. I oh, I think that yeah, definitely require less service, more reliable. Yeah. The other advantage is when you think about this. Okay, if you again we talk about that getting to the one. Typewriter. If you had yeah. to, if you had to narrow your entire collection and you get to keep one typewriter, which would that be? And yeah, there are a lot of advantages to a manual typewriter. Right. But this t one of these yeah. typewriters will do everything that you ever want to do. It'll do everything a full size with typewriter do. It'll look just as good. Mm -hmm. It'll roll through every almost any type of paper. Right. Yours particularly, you can do multiple copies. So if you really were doing yes. carbon copies. Right. Uh, you can do that with mine. Yours, really on the other hand, becomes truly portable, though. It is truly portable. Right. It is the do it your do everything typewriter that includes travel writing. Right. You know, like like it takes the place of a ultra portable, uh, ignoring the weight and size difference. Right. But it it will travel anywhere without a power source. Right. And then nowadays we've got we've actually when you think about our modern society, we've been accustomed to using devices that are going to run out of battery power. <laughs> That's true. I mean, we all have a it's, cell it's phone. something in our consciousness that we always think about, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this running out of battery power, you know, it started with the laptops, right? You know, you're gonna, you know, two hour battery power on your laptop, right. and that's even more catastrophic because when you run out of battery power, the computer stops, and if you haven't saved anything, it's <laughs> gone. It is gone. Here, at least, yeah. you're saving every time you hit a character. That's exactly and it. So it's a paper memory. So, yeah, it really is true, deportable, and mm -hmm. uh, very easy yep. to charge. But if you have one of those more modern pickup trucks with AC outlets in the back <laughs> yes, of the exactly. truck, like someone I know has, yes, like then my you, could, you could carry this singer with you and uh, do some electric tailgating. Yeah, electric tailgating. I think that's a lot and, of fun. And, and come the year 2023, when I'm retired, we might be doing that. I think we will do it. I can see us going up to... Oh, example, maybe Moab. Moab. You know, out yes, there in yes. the deserts and the arches, you know, we yeah. can go back there in the backcountry, <laughs> four-wheel driving, and get ourselves stuck. Yes. And where the cell phones don't work. Right. You know. Right. And, and we could type a, a help message with our electric typewriters and then fold them into a paper airplane. Paper airplane, yeah. Yeah, that, because there's no postal service there's out There's no there. postal service, and <laughs> yeah, you hope exactly. that the wind will catch it in the right direction and take it into Moab. Exactly. Somebody will find it, but yeah, oh yeah. well. Well, it's kind of fun to compare these two machines. You know, they're kind of brothers or cousins, maybe, or whatever. Half brothers, you know. Half brothers. Half yeah, brothers. Half brothers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One is definitely chained to a cord in order to operate it. One is only part of the time when it's charging to right. a cord, and it's truly portable other than that. It is fun to see the differences and similarities between both of these that were made by Smith Corona and uh, in the 1960s, and they are interesting mid-century modern looking devices. So, Very much so. Yeah, well, thank you, Kevin, again for coming in and being with us today, and I hope you guys have a great time with your creativity. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.